All right, welcome back. Now it's the second part of mechanical and sound wave. In this part, we are going to learn about superposition of waves. Superposition, other words, is called overlapping. Okay, overlapping. When there is a superposition of waves, there's one condition when superpositions between two identical progressive waves it will form a stationary wave. Uh, this stationary wave is also called a standing wave. Uh, if, you, if you look at it here, we have progressive wave and stationary wave. What's the difference? As the name suggests, progressive means the wave can move. Progressive. You, mean, you see, the wave is moving. When the wave is moving, it's called progressive wave. When the wave is not moving, we, we say it is stationary wave or standing wave. Standing. When you're not moving, you are standing, isn't it? The stationary wave uh, does not move. Yeah? It, the stationary wave is not moving. Progressive wave is moving. Okay. But the important thing here is um, when you have two identical progressive wave overlap each other, yeah, overlap each other or superpose each other, it will form a stationary wave yeah, or standing wave. But the condition is, the condition is, these two waves must be identical. Yeah, in what form? Yeah, identical means same. They must be same in terms of amplitude, must have same amplitude, same frequency. When you have same frequency, uh, means you have same angular frequency, same omega, because omega equal to 2 pi f. When you have same frequency, it means same omega. And also, they must have the same wavelength. Uh, when you have same wavelength, you have same wave number, because wave number k is equal to 2 pi over lambda. So, in all aspects, must be the same. Amplitude, frequency, wavelength, omega, wave number, all must be same. So, we can say these two waves are almost identical. Okay, but they are different in one only one aspect, which is the direction. These two waves must be in opposite direction. Okay, they must travel in opposite direction. One is moving, one wave is moving to the right, one wave is moving to the left. Uh, when you have opposite direction, means the equation will be one will be positive kx, and the other one will be negative kx. The one, the wave that is moving to the right, uh, the equation will be negative kx. The wave it, which is moving to the left, it is positive kx. Okay? Uh, so, uh, so, what I can say is, um, stationary wave can be formed when there is an overlapping between two identical waves, two identical waves, that is traveling in opposite direction. Okay? Uh, identical in terms of amplitude, frequency, wavelength, everything. But they must have opposite direction. The only one difference is the direction. One is positive kx, and the other one is negative kx. So, um, if you look at the formula, since both waves are identical, both progressive waves are identical, so they have the same amplitude. So they have the formula you see, they have same amplitude. They have same omega. See here? They have same omega. They also have the same wave number. Because, uh, you see? Same, uh, why is same omega? Because they have same frequency. Why have same wave number? Because they have same lambda. Uh, okay? The only difference is one is uh, negative kx, uh, another one is positive kx. Negative kx means moving to the right. Positive kx means the wave is moving to the left. Maybe it's very hard to imagine what's happening here. So that's why I want to show you a simulation. Here's a simulation. Okay? If you look at here, I, want, I try to play here. We have a... You see a blue wave. There's a blue wave moving to the right. Okay, blue wave moving to the right very slowly. Another wave which is uh, 
the yellow wave, the yellow wave is moving to the left. So you have two progressive waves. The blue wave moving to the right and the yellow wave moving to the left. Uh, and then you see the red one. The red wave is uh, formed when these two waves, the blue wave and the yellow wave, superposition, overlapping each other. And that's why it produced the red wave. Now, I want to produce a stationary wave, standing wave, a wave that is not moving, a wave that is not moving. How to produce it? As I said before, what's the condition? What's the condition? Uh, these two waves must be identical in terms of amplitude, frequency, and lambda. Okay, so to produce a stationary wave, we must make their wavelength equal, right? Uh, let me show you. Okay, let me show you. Okay, they, may, they must have the same wave, wavelength. Okay, maybe, um, can I make it smaller? Um, yeah, like this, yeah? Okay, so if you look at here, the red wave is not yet a stationary wave. Okay, so how to make, how to make a stationary wave? So first of all, I make, uh, I adjust the wavelength to be equal. So I try to adjust the wavelength to um, 3. Okay. And then I adjust the amplitude to be equal to okay, A1, 2, A2, 2. And then the period, I adjust to um, 2. Uh, period represent the frequency. Ah, uh, do you see that? Do you see the stationary wave? Do you see the blue one? The, do you see the blue wave? Do you see the yellow wave? These two waves, the blue and the yellow, they travel in the opposite direction. They have the same amplitude. Do you see that? They have the, they have the same amplitude and also the same wavelength. Uh, period also the same. Okay? And the red wave is called the Stationary wave. Uh, do you see the red wave is not moving? The red wave is uh, always at the same position, not moving. This is called stationary wave. You see that? Okay. That's called stationary wave. Okay, back to our subjects. So stationary wave is uh, happened when there is superposition between two identical progressive wave. Uh, but traveling in the opposite direction. So these two, these two waves uh, add up, we got a stationary wave. So now we uh, y1 and y2 plus together, we got a stationary wave equation. Uh, we got a stationary wave equation. When y1, this equation, plus with the y2, this equation, we get a new equation for the stationary wave. Uh, this is the equation for stationary wave. Well, y total equal to uh, two amplitude because the, each of the individual wave is one amplitude. So when you add up, you get two amplitude, uh, cos kx, sine omega t. How to actually add up these two equations? All right, uh, we need to use trigonometric identity. This is the mathematic knowledge. You need to use uh, trigonometric identity. That means uh, you need to still remember sine A plus B, sine A plus B becomes sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. Uh, when you have sine A minus B, you use uh, sine A cos B minus cos A sine B. So you, uh, you develop from there, uh, develop from there, you add up. Finally, you will get this, this equation. The equation for the stationary wave, y total equal to 2 amplitude cos kx sine omega t. 2a cos kx, 2a cos kx is actually the amplitude formula. Huh? Amplitude formula. Uh, we can say that different particles 
has different amplitude. Uh, different particle X has different amplitude. How to understand? Yeah, how to understand? Uh, let me show you the simulation again. Different particles, or we can say different X has different amplitude. Uh, this whole thing, 2A cos KX, is actually the amplitude for different particles. Different particles has different amplitude. You see, let's play this stationary wave. Okay? So you see, um, okay, maybe I want to draw. Okay, you, you look at here. Um, here. Uh, this particle, if you compare this particle here, uh, you see the particle? It only reached this, this uh, position. Uh, okay? And compared to this particle, uh, it has uh, amplitude 4. You see that? Uh, this particle can only reach to this position, and this particle can reach to this position. So we can say different x, yeah, uh, different x. Maybe this is a uh, x equal to zero point five. Uh, this one is x equal to, um, all right. Let me just uh, erase this. Okay, um, this one. Uh, this one is x equal to one. This particle here, uh, this particle x equal to zero point five can reach. Uh, this amplitude, but uh, x equal to 1 can only reach this amplitude. Do you see that? Uh, uh, even here, this one has zero amplitude. This is the place where we call it not. Uh, this is called not. Okay? And the one which reached the maximum amplitude is called antinote. Uh, this one is called the antinote. Like uh, this one at the center here. Ah, here. This one is called antidote. So, different particles has different amplitude. Okay? Now, um, let us go back to the slides. So, different x, different amplitude. Okay? And the antinode can reach two amplitudes. That's the maximum amplitude for the standing wave. Look at this one, the standing wave just now. Uh, the one with zero amplitude is called not. Yeah, called not. Uh, this is the spell, how we spell not, N-O-D-E, not. And the one with the maximum amplitude, which is 2A, is called the antinode. Antinode, uh, this is the antinode. Okay, empty node. Uh, anyway, um, between the node and the, the second consecutive node is one wavelength. Uh, this is one wavelength. Between node and node, it is half wavelength. Between empty node and empty node, also half wavelength. But between node and empty node, it is one quarter wavelength. This is very important. Okay, node and anti node is one quarter. Node and node is half wavelength. Anti node with anti node also half wavelength. Node and the second consecutive node is one wavelength. Now, to determine the position of node and anti node, how do we do it to find the position of node and anti node? Yeah, as this one. Ah, uh, you see that. How to get this position of where the node and anti node happens? How do we get it? Okay, as we know it, for node, the amplitude is always zero. For anti node, the amplitude is always the maximum two amplitude. Yeah, you understand that? Because the individual wave is one amplitude, when you add up, the maximum amplitude is two amplitude. Okay? The so two amplitude is actually the amplitude for the anti node. So to find the position, we just take the amplitude formula 2a cos kx equal to zero for node and equal to two amplitude for anti node. Uh, okay? So remember to put the modular sign. Modular sign because we have, uh, if we look at the 
this one we have uh sometimes we have the positive two amplitude sometimes you go to positive two sometimes you go to negative two amplitude see that that's why we need to put modulus okay let's consider the node for the node the amplitude is always zero so 2a cos kx equal to zero right and then two amplitude uh, divide you get zero again so cos kx equal to zero so in what condition we will get cos kx equal to zero so remember the cos theta graph cos graph is this one the smiling graph so when is cos theta equal to zero uh, cos theta equal to zero when pi over two uh, when pi over two and also 3 pi over 2. So the next one will be 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, 9 pi over 2. That's the position of the node. Okay? Uh, then, uh, that is for kx. That is for kx. So to find x, we just divide by k. Uh, divide by k, you get the, you get the x. k is the, k is, uh, 2 pi over lambda uh, but first you must know know the lambda then you can substitute into the k then you divide then you get the x the position of the node now for the anti nodes anti nodes amplitude is 2 amplitude modulus okay so to remove the modulus this one become positive and negative 2 amplitude Okay, as I said just now, sometimes the amplitude is positive, sometimes the amplitude is negative. Okay, so um, divide by 2 amplitude, so cos kx equal to positive negative 1. Okay, positive negative 1. So when is cos theta equal to positive 1 or negative 1? Yeah, cos theta equal to 1 when it is at, when the theta is 0. Uh, when theta is 0. And cos theta also equal to negative 1 when pi, pi, uh, cos theta equal, also equal to 1 when it is 2 pi. So you can predict the next one should be 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi. Okay? Divide by k again. Divide by k again, then you get the x. Uh, so that's how you get the position of node and anti node. All right. So, do you understand how to get the stationary wave? It's the superposition between two identical wave, uh, two identical progressive wave, uh, but opposite direction, traveling in opposite direction, one to the right, one to the left. Okay, and uh, this uh, between node and anti node, well, between node and node, it is half lambda. Between anti node and anti node, it is also half lambda. Between node and anti node, it is one quarter lambda. But be between node and the second consecutive node is called one lambda. Okay, so stay tuned for the third part. See you. Bye.